All right, welcome back, everyone. So, uh, once again, we we have the uh, copper pipe problem. We also have the uh, insulation. So, uh, but this time we have uh, we have something we have something a little bit more complicated. We're also gonna add internal and external convection to the mix. All right. So before uh, in the previous problems we had two uh, resistances due to the conductance. We have we had the resistance due to the pipe. And we had the resistance due to the insulation. So now we're gonna we also we're also gonna add two more. We're gonna have two more resistances in our network. So we're gonna have two more uh, thermal resistance terms in our resistance network. So uh, on the inside we have the temperature of the fluid. Okay, and way on the outside we have the temperature of the uh, the temperature of the surroundings T infinity. So uh, let me give the, let me just uh, give this some dimensions real quick. So on the inside we have R two, and the the outer radius of the copper pipe is gonna be. Oops, this was R one. My bad. R one, and the outer radius is gonna be R two, and finally the outermost radius. Of, oops, wait, one second. The outermost radius of the let's just do insulation is going to be R three. Okay, so with those uh, dimensions in mind, let's see uh, let's see how our thermal resistance network is going to look like this time. So okay, these two. All right, the uh, conductive resistances. We know how to account for these. Okay, we've we've been accounting for th uh, con resistances due to uh, conductivity in the previous examples. However, these two, the other ones that the, uh, these two are going to be our convective resistances. One is going to be due to internal convection, and the other one is going to be due to external convection. So let's see if we can come up with expressions, okay? Now, resistances, thermal resistances due to con convection are usually expressed as 1 over the heat transfer coefficient H times the area. So for the internal convection resistance, it's going to be the heat transfer coefficient, the heat transfer coefficient on the inside times the area on the inside of the copper pipe, which is just going to be equal to 1 over hi times 2 pi r1l, okay? So r1 being the inner radius of the pipe, good. And so the internal convection, the resistance due to internal convection looks good. And similarly, the resistance due to the external convection is just going to be 1 over the heat transfer coefficient on the outside times the area on the outside. And now this area right here is going to be, if we go back to our problem, this is going to be the outermost radius. This is going to be the curved surface area associated with the outermost the outermost uh, area, the outermost surface. All right, and that's just going to be R three. Okay, good. All right. So, and we've already we already know how to account account for the uh, resistances in the pipe and the uh, the resistance in the insulation. Those are both uh, resistances due to conductivity. Okay. Going back to the overall problem. Okay. Going back to the overall problem, the overall rate of heat transfer is going to be equal to the overall temperature difference divided by the net thermal resistance. And to keep everybody on the same page, the assumptions, the assumptions associated, okay, uh, the main assumptions here are going to be, let me just write this, the first one being obviously steady state, okay. This is uh, this expression is going to compute the steady state rate of heat transfer, and secondly, constant conductivity. Okay, constant conductivity is important. Constant conductivity, and also also we're gonna have we're gonna need constant heat transfer coefficients now since we're dealing with a uh, intern since we're dealing with dealing with convection now, constant heat transfer coefficients. Okay, so with those three key assumptions, uh, our, this is going to be the analysis of our, of our problem. Okay, so our 
let's see overall rate of heat transfer is going to be equal to the temperature of the fluid minus the temperature of the surroundings okay so one by one we're going to start plugging in our resistances and for the for the resistance due to internal convection we already have the expression 1 over h i times 2 pi r1 l okay r pipe r pipe okay that's just going to be r2 minus r1 the thickness of the pipe okay the thickness of the pipe divided by the conductivity of the pipe times the log mean area of the pipe the log mean area of the pipe okay and the insulation all right now we're moving on to the insulation that's going to be r3 minus r2 r3 minus r2 is the insulation of the pipe and divide that by the conductivity of the insulation and the log mean area associated with the insulation good and finally the external convection the external convection and that's just going to be one over the outside the heat transfer coefficient associated with the outside times the two times two pi r three l okay all right so we have everything almost uh let's just uh let's just build our expressions for the log mean areas real quick so the log mean area for the pipe is just gonna be two pi l times uh, r two minus r one divided by the natural log of r two over r1 good and the log mean area associated with the insulation with the insulation okay let's just write that down is going to be once again 2 pi l r3 minus r2 the thickness of the insulation divided by the natural log of r3 over r2 all right good so Okay, these are the, uh, we have our model. Okay, we have our model. We have the, uh, we have our, we've developed our equations. So in the next part, in the next part of this video, we're going to see, uh, we're going to once again, hop into Excel and see how, uh, how, how this, um, how we can compute the rate of heat transfer. And we, we're going to play around. So just to give you guys a spoiler alert, we're going to play around with this value. We're going to play around with the thickness. We're going to play around with the thickness of the insulation. So we're going to be varying R3 basically, okay? By varying R3, you can control the thickness of the insulation. And we're going to see the uh, effect of R3, how R3 impacts our overall rate of heat transfer, okay? This is going to be the goal of our next video, okay? So once again, we, for our uh, thermal, for our heat transfer, through the uh, copper pipe with insulation now we've added two more two more layers of complexity the internal convection and the external convection uh, keep in mind we're not talking about how to compute the heat transfer coefficients okay we're not talking about how to compute the heat transfer coefficients that comes later okay so our overall the form we've formulated our overall problem okay over everything looks good so yeah, in the next video, we're just going to hop into Excel and see how, uh, how varying the, uh, out, the outermost radius of the insulation affects our rate of heat transfer. Okay, um, thank you so much for watching, guys. All right, good luck.